Just as USC football is starting another season, so is sports scene. We're kicking off our season with this special episode dedicated to the Alabama game. Sports scene starts now. chance to be able to play the defending national champion, number one team in the country, one of the best head coaches in, in, in the history of our profession. Um, that's why you come to SC. We come to SC to compete against the very best. USC and coach Clay Helton are fired up about playing Alabama, the number one team in the country, on Saturday. And we're fired up about our first episode of the season here at Sports Scene. Welcome to Studio C of the Annenberg Media Center. I'm Jackson Safon. And I'm Connor McGlynn. This USC football program comes in with a lot of changes from last season until right now. And this weekend marks the first chance for USC to really develop and see how those uncertainties will play out. Now the first off and probably the most important is Clay Helton is beginning his first season as first full season as head coach of USC. He took over last November before the Pac-12 championship game and did finish the season 0-2 as head coach. But not only will USC be under the tutelage of a new head coach, they're also going to have a new face under center in redshirt junior Max Brown. Brown won the starting quarterback role after a long uh, competition against redshirt freshman Sam Darnold that extended through fall camp. This is Brown's first chance getting real meaningful snaps after getting into a few games late the past two seasons. Now despite having a new quarterback and a new head coach, USC comes into the season in the AP poll ranked 20th in the preseason and they are predicted to finish second in the Pac-12 South to rival UCLA as chosen by the Pac-12 media. Now part of that second place projection is because USC has one of the strongest strengths of schedules in the nation. They're currently set to face six teams ranked in the AP top 25 and three that are in the top 10. Now Clay Helton explained how his team has been preparing for these tough tests. It was really important to us in training camp to be able to have the opportunity to go best on best. Even when you see our end period, that iron sharpens iron, you see the guys that are going against each other. And that's very important, not only for this game, but I think for the rest of the season. I mean, you're talking Alabama, Notre Dame, Pac-12 schedule. You know, it's going to be very important to keep up this type of service for each other. Now, USC expected a lot of these pressures coming into the season, but one thing they didn't expect was a development that happened over the weekend. Sophomore linebacker Osa Messina is now under investigation in both Utah and California for alleged sexual assault. But Max Brown has been here. He's a redshirt junior. He's been here for four, three and a half years now. He's been through this before. He's been through a lot of controversies in his time here at USC, and he doesn't think that this particular one is going to, to affect the team. Yeah, it's tough, um, but at the end of the day, uh, we've had some distractions of past and uh, really? I'll leave that to uh, coach coach Helen to, to, to address really there's been distractions in just the past? just a few okay yeah. just a few well Connor if there's one thing USC knows it's controversy yeah but while there's been a lot of off the field things going on the team is still focused on Alabama and the game on Saturday and for more on these historic programs let's toss it over to Max USC and Alabama two of the most storied programs in college football history 27 national championships, 8 Heisman Trophy winners, and 819 NFL draft picks combined between the two schools. Alabama and USC have only faced each other seven times, with the Crimson Tide holding a series lead of 5-2. Perhaps the most memorable game in the series came back in 1970 before college football was completely racially integrated. USC's All-African-American starting backfield led by Sam Cunningham defeated Bear Bryant's all-white Crimson Tide. Cunningham's performance was eye-opening in more ways than one. His 135 yards and two touchdowns on just 12 carries gave USC the win on the field while also helping accelerate racial integration of football all across the country. And the other USC victory in the series came in 1978 when the Trojans took down also a number one ranked Alabama team. The Crimson Tide heads into Saturday's game as 10 and a half point favorites, but you can make a case for either team to win. Alabama is fresh off a national championship last year and has 14 starters returning from that team. And even as heavy underdogs, the Trojans should not be completely ruled out as well. SC is, has seven victories over number one ranked teams, the most of any school, and this year's team returns all starters on offense but one. On either side, talent is not a question, but at AT&T Stadium, something is going to have to give. And while USC is trying to not drop their first game of the season, here's something to keep in mind. The Trojans are undefeated in their last 17 season openers. Jackson and Connor, back to you. 
Thanks, Max. In order for these teams to create their own legacy come Saturday, they'll have to withstand a few tests. First off, there will be a lot of new faces on the coaching staff. There are nine coaches in new positions, including T. Martin moving to offensive coordinator and Johnny Nanton moving to linebackers. But the most important thing is the fact that T. Martin is now calling plays on offense and Clancy Pendergast is returning as defensive coordinator, a position he held back in 2013. Now this is important because Pendergast is invoking a more aggressive style in the defense, something they've been lacking in the years past. Now I'm excited to see the return of John Baxter down here at special teams coordinator. It's a position where USC has really struggled since he last served on the staff with Pendergast in 2013. And I want to see the boost that he gives this program. No doubt about it. It's going to be interesting to see what Baxter does. But a coach that was at USC and is now at Alabama, Lane Kiffin. Now Kiffin was fired back in the middle of the 2013 season. He then took over as the Alabama offensive coordinator before the 14 season. But during his time at Alabama, Kiffin has had a new quarterback each season, and this year is going to be no different. Alabama is yet to announce a starting quarterback, deciding between redshirt freshman Blake Barnett and junior Cooper Bateman. So regardless of who Kiffin has under center, a huge threat at his disposal is wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Yeah, Calvin Ridley, he was just a true freshman last year at Alabama, but as you can see just by the numbers, he was a monster. He had 89 catches, over 1,000 yards, and 7 touchdowns. And the thing with Calvin Ridley is he's got blazing speed, so it's going to be really interesting to see his matchup against the Dory Jackson. Now, Jackson, as we know, is a preseason All-American, but he has struggled in the past against receivers with elite speed, such as Notre Dame's Will Fuller. Uh, for one, uh, you mentioned already the speed. I'm um, elusive player. When he gets the ball in the field, he gets space, can do anything with it, great hands, nice size. So you see those things, the tangible stand out. He's a good player. So when you watch someone on film like that, then you got to know what's expected. Ridley's going to be leading the Alabama offense, but their defense is obviously nothing to overlook. Connor, Definitely. Alabama lost four defensive starters to the NFL draft last year. So what can we expect on Saturday? Jackson, the scariest part about Alabama's defense is that no matter who they lose, they have somebody just as talented stepping right in. Seven out of the last eight years, the Alabama defense has finished ranked in the top five in the nation. And as you mentioned, they lost stars like Ashawn Robinson at D-tackle and Cyrus Jones at corner. But they have other guys like senior Jonathan Allen, who was second in the SEC in sacks last year, as well as cornerback Marlon Humphreys, who had 15 starts as a true freshman and had three interceptions. They're going to be there to hold down this Crimson Tide defense. And while Alabama obviously has a bunch of studs to lean on, USC is going to need to rely on some new starting replacements to be difference makers. Let's go to Rachel for more on the new starters. Alongside Max Brown, USC's Week 1 depth chart features several changes from last season. Here's a quick list of some key players stepping into starting positions. Starting with a crucial addition to a decimated position, Stevie Tuikalavatu will take over at defensive tackle. The 25-year-old graduate transfer from Utah will use his veteran talent to fill a void and bring necessary experience into a young D-line. On the same side of the ball, senior inside linebacker Michael Hutchings has come into his own as a leader for the defense. Hutchings was a freshman during Clancy Pendergast's first stint at defensive coordinator, and that has given him the edge and the spot over the rest of the linebacking unit. Quarterback wasn't the only position up for grabs on the offense. Redshirt sophomore Chris Brown challenged incumbent Damian Mama for the starting left guard position and has gotten most of the first team reps in practice. However, Mama has gotten more time with the position this week, so it looks to be a game-time decision. USC coaches will rely on these new starters to step up and bring some heat this Saturday against Alabama. Thanks, Rachel. Now the teams will be the ones battling it out at AT&T Stadium on Saturday, but the schools and fans couldn't help but get in on the fun. The USC bookstore unveiled these shirts that say Roll Tears Roll on them, which is mocking Alabama's saying of Roll Tide Roll. But Bama Nation couldn't let USC get the last laugh. Some Crimson Tide fans put out this shirt that says, Our OJ only killed Clemson, referring to tight end OJ Howard, who had 208 yards and two touchdowns in last year's national title game against the Tigers. Now, I have to admit, I was a bit surprised that the bookstore put out those shirts, considering all the bulletin board material provides for Alabama. Not that the team's need any more motivation in this game coming up. But the shirt, the Alabama shirt, was taken off the tpublic.com per request from the University of Alabama and the University of Clemson. Well, absolutely. We won't be having no shirts on. We'll probably be dressed more like this as we <laughs> head down to Dallas this weekend. That's all we have for you now. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Sports Scene USD for live updates and videos throughout the weekend. Enjoy a great weekend of college football, everyone. We'll see you in a couple weeks.